Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are some romances with the opposites attract trope. These are 10 romance books where you have opposite people coming together and falling in love. These books can be really fun because the dynamic is very interesting. You like maybe like a grumpy or a sunshine or a quiet and shy person. So yes, opposites attract. Um, let's get into these 10 recommendations. The first one that I have is Savor It by Tara DeWitt. This one is so fun. Think of Jess from New Girl, but if she like lived on a farm and took care of animals, that's our heroine. <laughs> and she actually ends up falling for or starting a romance with the guy who moved in next door with the niece he's taking care of. Excuse if you hear some sounds, the dog is eating cardboard. So as long as she's not peeing somewhere, I'm fine with her eating the cardboard. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, she falls in love with the guy who just recently moved in next door. That's her romance. He is the guardian now to his niece, who's actually a teenager. So I really loved that like new guardian element in here with a kid who is not like below the age of 12. I found that really interesting, but these two are totally different. He's like a big city chef man and um she is this small town country sunshine woman this one is just so fun hilarious there's some amazing like pets in here um and the small town kind of gives me like stars hollow vibes but make it more southern next is a business casual by bk borison this is her latest book in the love light farm series this is the romance between nova and charlie and nova is um even though she's blonde she has more of this like darker tone to her compared to Charlie. Oh, now she found a squeaker. He is very much the golden retriever hero and she is kind of the broody, heavily tattooed woman. The baby has decided to grace us with her presence. You wanna say hello, baby? Say, hi, baby. Hi, baby. Okay, now let's sleep. Hopefully she sleeps, she's been playing. So maybe she'll sleep. They have this very funny, interesting relationship. Oh, she's biting me out. And Charlie just loves to get under Nova's skin. And the beginning of this book, Nova and him are at a wedding. And Nova's like, you know what? I think I wanna have some fun tonight. And she basically says like, hey, you wanna come home with me? And it's a one night stand to more romance. Do not eat this blanket. Girl, these two honestly could not be more different, but they're totally made for each other. And it, I feel like it was a great addition to the series. I loved it. Next, I have Only and Forever by Chloe Lisa. This is also her latest book in her series, the Bourbon Brothers series. And it's also the last book in this series. So it's over now. So sad. We have another kind of like golden retriever hero and more of a darker tone heroine. They also actually read like totally different book genres. He loves reading romance and she is a thriller reader and a thriller author. So um, Vigo, our hero, actually opens up a bookstore and Tulula is going to help him open it in exchange for him helping her with her writer's block for this book she's writing. Also throughout that, Tulula moves in with Vigo above the bookstore. He has an apartment up there and she moves in with him and it's kind of like forced proximity. I eat it up. I love it. But she is more of a kind of like glass half empty type of person. Whereas Vigo is the more glass is half full type of person. Baby Moon or Bust by Ava Hunter is next. This one is so stinking fun. Um, so this one's very much city girl country, um, like mountain man, man. <laughs> These two have a one night stand one night and, um, the next the hero sees of her she's on television giving a house tour i believe she's an interior designer and she's giving a house tour on television and she's pregnant and um i think she said she's like six months pregnant and that's when they were together and so he's gonna go hunt her down find her turns out she's on a baby moon and he goes to the baby moon the vacation that she's on to try and reconnect with her and figure out if that's his baby and if it is what are they gonna do about it Next, I have a sports romance. This is a Burnout by Rebecca Jenshack. We have a motocross racing hero and a pink princess gymnast heroine. Nox just joined this like motocross stunt group. They like do like fun jumps and stunts and stuff. And he's not doing the best. And his teammate recommends like he goes sees our heroine who's a gymnast because she helped him with like doing flips and stuff. Um, but he's at first like, are you serious? Like go see someone who does gymnastics. Like, I don't think that's gonna help. But man, our heroine like puts him in his place telling him like gymnastics is a very intense sport and helps him 
even though he's grumbling about it at first. <laughs> They're total opposites, I wanna say aesthetic wise. The heroine, again, is like, loves pink, is frilly, loves girly stuff, and he's very much the like, dirt man <laughs> black type. But there is one really cute scene in here where I think he gets her her own motocross bike and he makes sure it's pink for her, which I love that. Next is Sweetest in the Gale by Olivia Dade. There's actually one story in particular in this bind up that I'm thinking of. This is a bind up of three novellas that Olivia Dade wrote that take place in this series called Marysburg. And this one, I think it's the middle story, which might possibly be my favorite one. This is one that takes place in a high school. And you've seen the high school in a few of the like main books in the series. Anyway, the heroine of the story, she is the art teacher. And one of her like most favorite um, assignments is coming up where like her students are supposed to make mini dioramas. And um, she just loves that. Like one of her main hobbies is making mini dioramas of murder scenes. And people are supposed to look at the dioramas and figure out the murder, like solve the murder. Um, and so at first the hero, who is a very meticulous, straight-laced math teacher at the school when he goes to observe her, because sometimes teachers observe each other in the classroom setting. When he first observes her, he's like, this is like grotesque, this is weird, like what is going on? He finds it very chaotic where he likes more order. But once he gets to know her and how much her students love her and her work and how much she loves the students' work and them specifically, like he just, he, he realizes how wrong he was. So I, I adore this little story and I hope more people read it. If you want more of a wintry style read, this is With Love From Cold World by Alicia Thompson. This one does have more of like a winter vibe to it, but this actually takes place in Florida. So um, this takes place at basically kind of like an inside amusement park called Cold World where people can come to like experience snow in like Florida. like where you're never gonna get snow. These two characters work at the amusement park. Um, Aza is our hero and he kind of is the guy who's like a floater. He works everywhere and does everything. He's worked there forever and our heroine works in I believe the finance department. Anyway they don't really get off on the right foot because they're completely different. Like she likes order and lists and a plan and he's very much more go with the flow kind of like flies by the seat of his pants type of person and the heroine just can't stand that <laughs> they are very different but man the moment that they get together it is electric it is hot they get stuck in cold world overnight together one night and that's kind of like the turning point in them and their relationship and their like animosity to lovers next i have a mafia romance this is silent lies by new her eighth book in the perfectly imperfect series this is a mafia romance series with um, characters who are different than what you would typically see in a mafia romance book. We have a lot of mental illness representation, chronic illness representation, and disability rep. I really like how Neva makes sure to highlight those voices in her mafia romance books because you rarely see those in mafia books. These two are very different from each other, these characters, because our hero um, is a very powerful mafia boss and the heroine was not expecting to marry into that high life. She and her family are part of the mafia, but she never really expected to marry someone of that high standing, but her her own mafia boss from her family um, needs her to marry this man and report back to him on the happenings on what's going on. The heroine also doesn't really dress like someone from the mafia. Um, she loves to dress in loud, bright colors with interesting fabrics. She loves her style. Her style is very different. The hero can't really understand her quirky style and her quirky attitude, but he does slowly start to fall in love with his wife. And the heroine is quick to realize, I don't think I can like tattletale of this man basically because I'm falling in love with him. And lastly I have two historicals for you. First is Dreaming of You by Lisa Kleypas. This one has the notorious Derek Craven in this book <laughs> and he is very much kind of like the rake. He owns a I believe gambling club and the heroine is this woman who is a writer. She has spectacles and um, just wants to know everything about everything and she very much follows the rules and she goes up to Derek Craven and is like I would really love to observe your gambling den because I'm trying to write a book and she's a very popular author by the way and I'm trying to write a book with the gambling den kind of like setting. Um, he's quick to say no but then she actually helps save his life and he's kind of like okay I guess I gotta let you in <laughs> um and these two fall for each other they couldn't be more different though and it is so hilarious seeing the hero go like chip away at her like very straight laced walls and lastly I have Mary in Scarlet by Anne Gracie the heroine of the story really reminds me of Eloise from Bridgerton but kind of more off of her rocker <laughs> 
She's a little more chaotic. She was always planning to never marry. She never wanted to get married. Something happens to a point in here where she does have to. And it's to a duke of all people. She grew up wearing trousers, um, grew up running around, doing whatever she wanted because her father um, was never in the picture. She didn't have a mother either. Her mother passed away. And so basically the household staff of her family was just taking care of her. They didn't really know what to do with her. And at the beginning of the series in book number one, um, the hero of that story ends up basically adopting her into his family with his two sisters. That's his niece. So he's like, come on, come live with us, come stay with us. Anyway, so she has to marry this very prim and proper duke and she is not a prim and proper lady by whatever means so <laughs> anyways there you have it those are some opposites attract romances me and miss winnie have had an interesting interesting filming session i uh, normally takes me only maybe max 13 minutes to film a video uh, like a rec video and it's been 20 <laughs> because because of this sticker um but now she's asleep so hopefully the next few that i have to film go quicker but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a dog emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.